All right, let's dive into this tutorial where we are going to build this sort of before and after hover slider thing. Uh, I'm just going to dive right in, and then I will show you a plugin that I have that sort of makes this really easy. And then I'll jump into just building out this code from scratch so you can just sort of see how I got there if you're interested in learning about that. So let's dive into first just installing the code and getting this up and running really quickly. All right, here I am on my installation page uh, right down here. This is the video that I'm gonna have that I'm recording right now. And then here is the code. So all you gotta do is copy this code. Let's go back to our website. So you see all I have is just an image block. I've just dropped in an image block. So I'm gonna hit done save and let's go to our design tab and then custom CSS. I'm just gonna paste that code I just copied right there. So there are two things I need to change. One, I need to change out the block ID that matches the image block ID, the block ID of this image right here. And then I need to switch out uh, this image URL, just nothing to the actual URL address of the my after image. So let's do that. So I have this great tool from Heather Tovey. Just copy the block ID right there turn it off so it's not there anymore and I'm just gonna paste it right there boom done so that is number one you'll see this before after pops up but the image doesn't change so next let's change out this image URL so what I need to do is upload my after image I've already done that if you just hit this manage custom files down here I've uploaded it right here if you haven't just hit this upload icon and just upload it right there uh, but I'm just gonna hit that and once you click it, it's going to insert the image URL of that image wherever your cursor was. I had put my cursor between the parentheses of these URLs, and so it just put it in in the right spot, um, but make sure it goes in there. And now as you hover over, boom, we're done. So that is it. If you just want to take that and run with it, go play around, have fun. Um, if you want to stick with me and learn how I built out this code and learn a little bit more about CSS and code in Squarespace, stick with me, and we'll do that right now. Womp womp, of course I have to plug my own stuff. I built a plugin for this, it's pretty cool. Uh, it has this sliding effect. You can also, I have the option to turn on that hover effect that we had before. Um, but this is much easier code. You can see we use two image blocks, so we're using much less code. So if you're handing this off to a client, you might want to consider purchasing this plugin. Uh, I also have a style builder where you can style it however you want right here. This is, uh, here's a glimpse into the installation page where you can change all these different styles. So more advanced styling options. If you want that, check out my website. You can buy it there. It's great, super easy to install. Uh, but now let's actually jump into installing this code or we're writing this code from scratch. So let's do that right now. All right, we're back. Okay, so here is our image block. Nothing, nothing in our CSS right now. So all of this, all the code we're gonna write today revolves around pseudo elements. So if you're curious about like what are pseudo elements, that stuff you've heard about those, we're gonna be using those throughout this entire tutorial. Um, and so the first thing we want to do, let's start off by adding our labels, our before and after labels. So let's jump into our web inspector, the truth of all code behind any website. And eh, that's not what I wanna see. Right click inspect. Um, and let's look at our code block image. So I've already gone through the code. I know what I'm looking to select, um, but every code block image, so here is the block level element right there. And I'm sort of moving down. We could select any of these. I went with the figure right now because this is, the figure is our HTML element for the actual image. And so that would make sense for us to replace this if we want to add a label or if we want to do the after image. So I went with our figure. So let me just throw that in there. What we're going to do, we're going to add this colon and then say, uh, let's say before. And so what this is doing, we are now adding in an element before as, as the first child element of whatever we selected. So not before, so before any of the other content in there. But you see nothing is popping up in there. And it's not popping up because we've added no content. So we need this content property right here for any of our pseudo elements to appear. And notice our before is there. So remove it, it's not there and then add it and it is there. So that is what we're doing. We're kind of inserting a fake element into the HTML, uh, but we don't want it to be blank. We want it to say before. So let's do that. And you'll see it just pops up right here into our page. Pretty cool. Nothing's gonna show up in our web inspector in the HTML because we're doing this all through CSS. So now let's just style this up. Let's position it so it's on top. Uh, position, we're gonna use our, our absolute. So it's absolutely positioned. Let's 
Z index put this above the image so you can kind of see it there, but it's black text. So let's change the color to white, the font, font weight to 700, maybe give it a text shadow, uh, just like a small little text shadow, five pixels, uh, black, not white. Uh, the default of our text shadow would be whatever the color is here. So that's why we need to change that to black. Uh, and then let's give it some padding, maybe seven pixels vertical and eight, 17 pixels horizontal, just sort of move it out, even it, space it evenly within there. Okay, so that's looking good. If you wanted to move that maybe to like the bottom right, you could just say bottom zero. This is gonna position it on the bottom and then right zero. So you can play around with the positioning there if you'd like. Okay, so there is our before. And so what do we want to do is as we hover over it, we want this text to change to after. So since we've already selected our figure, added in all of this stuff, we can just honestly, oh, there's pasting what I had before. We can just do the same thing, figure, uh, not before, we'll say, not after, I mean before, and let's just override what we had before and change our content here to say after. And so there we go. So now it's overridden and saying after, but obviously we only want this to happen on hover. So let's grab our block ID. I'm gonna turn on Heather Tovey's little uh, Chrome. If you don't have this Chrome tool, go to the Chrome store, uh, install this tool, very helpful. Heather Tovey built it, I love it, very good. I'm just gonna put it right there and then add our hover pseudo selector. Let's turn this off so you can see it. So now this is only overriding whenever we hover over our image block. Boom, so there we go, so that's right. So now we want to replace our image, so let's do that. So we're gonna use, and notice I will say our before pseudo selector has nothing to do with whatever content we have in here. This could say messy and this could say clean. So these before after pseudo select or pseudo elements, these are just adding an, an element right here within our HTML, either before all of the children element or after all the children elements. It has nothing to do with our text. And so that's, you know, messy clean. Why don't we just leave it like that? So now we want to do a similar thing, but instead of adding text, we wanna add an image on top. So instead of using our before, because we can't override that, we're already using that element, we're going to do, uh, I'm just gonna copy that, and we're just gonna say after. So these are like the two uh, pseudo elements that we can use before and after to just add something in. So we're gonna do the same thing, but content, our content property, it can only hold text. And so I can't say like an image right in there. So I'm just gonna make it blank. And remember, we need our content property for it to actually appear. So here's our before and down here, let's roll up all of this. These are all the direct children of our figure element. Here's our after one. So what we're gonna do here is do a similar thing. We're gonna position it absolute absolute, I always misspell that. We're gonna say top zero, left zero, sort of position it within the figure element, our figure element right there. And just say width, we want it to span the entire width. So width is 100, the height is also 100%. And just to show you what we're doing here, we'll just say background blue. So that's what we're doing, we're adding this we've created this element it has no background it's nothing's there um, i'm just showing you blue so you can see it but it's spanning the entire width of that element and so what we want to do is say background image and this is where we want to add in our url of the after image so i've already added it into manage custom files it's right here if you haven't upload it right there super easy and then just click on the image and it'll paste in the URL, so you'll see it'll add in, this is kind of annoying that Squarespace does it this way, it'll just add in that URL wherever your cursor was. So you can see my cursor was outside of our URL parentheses, so I'm just gonna have to cut that and then paste it in between the parentheses right there. And so you'll see it'll automatically pop up. We haven't added the hover effect, and so that's why nothing is happening as I hover over it, with the image at least. Uh, but let's size this. So we wanna change the background size. Again, we're targeting the image of our background, these background image and background size. These are sub properties of our background property. So background size, we'll just make that cover. So it's just gonna cover the entire element. It's gonna say, just fit within, have the entire image right here fit within whatever container that we've put it in. Um, and don't have it 
like size the exact image just make sure it covers the entire thing I could say this uh, contain and so that'll contain oh so I guess it's these these images are the same if these images weren't the same proportion uh, then one would sort of be overlapping the other and it wouldn't look good so you want this to be background size cover uh, and so there we go that's kind of what we want to do and we want to do the same thing as we did before we only want this to pop up as we hover over it so let's do this I'm just gonna copy this same hover selector right there paste it in and now as we hover over it clean messy so that's great we don't have this nice little transition effect um, and the way we do that we're gonna have to sort of break down what we did right here uh, we have our hover figure blah 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 so we want this to always apply so this is always applying so this clean photo is always there but what we're gonna do is give it an opacity of zero so now it's always there but the opacity is zero so you never see it and so what we want to do on hover is change that opacity so this is just a nice little uh, transition effect if you will we're, we'll copy that so on hover the only property we're gonna change we're gonna opacity one we're sort of doing the same thing as before just with a little bit more code and now we're just adjusting the opacity here so it's the exact same thing but what this now allows us to do is on our base code back here we can just say transition opacity so we're transitioning the opacity over 0.3 seconds and give it a, a uh, uh, timing function I think is what it's called so the timing of it will be ease so it'll sort of ease in and ease out and so now as we hover over we got this nice little transition effect and so that is it that's really all you need to do the problem with this code right now is the this code is applying to every single figure figure tag name on our entire website so we just want to put this code in front of it um, let's sort of break down all of this and rewrite it so I have it in the way that I have it on my installation page um, and make it really easy for you to add more of these if you'd like so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna start with our block ID like this so this is the only thing we'll be replacing right here and then within this and we can only use this code inside of our custom CSS area it doesn't allow us to use it anywhere else that's a whole nother side tangent this is less l-e-s-s -S css um, and so it's processed differently than regular css um, but let's just sort of put all of this within it so i'm going to cut that i'm going to paste it in here so now we're selecting our block id and our figure within it and adding that before only to that block id now we can say instead of this block id all we can say is that ampersand and then hover and so that ampersand basically just takes whatever we have on the outside and adds it in there so this is where we've now nested this CSS in here so we'll do that so this ampersand just think whatever the more parent CSS selector is is replacing that ampersand so we'll do the same thing here just need to cut all of that we'll paste it in right there that's working and then last here we're gonna cut all of this and paste it in right here and replace our block ID here with our ampersand and now let's highlight all of this shift tab it'll format it and now it's working again now if we just want this to change again just copy all of this and you only need if you want to add this on a different image block I mean just copy all of this paste it in again and just replace our block ID and your image URL those are the only things you need to change again so we've sort of reformatted it to work and make it really replicable for you so there it is there's the tutorial I hope this helps hope this helps you understand CSS and pseudo elements a little bit more let me know if you have any questions grab my uh, plugin if you want to use that on a client site or something um, I hope you have a nice day have a great time